of Ironman Frankfurt, the European Championships. Now, I thought we could run through the A-Station today, share some tips, tricks, and some methods to going through the A-Station in the best way possible. Also taking a look at how some of the athletes are coming through, they're both age group and pro alike. And hopefully you, maybe even as a beginner, can take something away from this. <laughs> Okay, so we're actually here at a run A station on the run course here at Frankfurt. Um, that's really quite big A station actually. I mean, obviously it's an Ironman race, but in quite extreme conditions here, so they're making sure the athletes are well looked after. It doesn't differ too much for a bike A station. Uh, we have Coca-Cola, we've got some energy gels, energy bars, we have some bananas, cakes, we've got some Red Bull, Coca-Cola, uh, water, isotonic drink, sponges, ice, and salt, uh, you name it all sorts here. Um, but one thing you really do need to remember, a good ground rule here, is that all these people, very kind people handing out the stuff to you here, are all volunteers and they've been particularly nice to us today trying to keep us cool whilst we're filming. So do be really thankful to them as you're going through and taking your stuff. But now let's run through each of the stations individually to see how they could help you during your race. <laughs> Okay, so I touched a little bit on the different preferences. I've got a very good example behind me here. So we've got bananas and cakes on one stand, and then I've got energy gels, energy bars on the stand directly next to it. One is a very quick release, um, whilst the other is a bit of a more slower release. We've got energy gels, often a really popular option, particularly over 70.3s, very quick release and just easy to take on and absorb. The uh, bananas and cakes obviously is a little bit harder to eat as you're going in, into a race but tend to be a little bit more popular in the longer distance races like an Ironman. A lot of people just like the comfort of having something they're really used to and also just the fact that taking gels for a whole Ironman can just seem a little bit too much sometimes. Okay, so we've got a few different uh, drink stations here. So we've got, as I mentioned before, we've got water, isotonic, Coca-Cola, and Red Bull right here. So what I would suggest where you can is actually sticking to water and isotonic drinks for the first stages of the race, or as long as you can do. Coca-Cola and Red Bull is fantastic, as I'm sure you're all aware with that sugar in it and the caffeine. But what happens is once you start taking that, now. I must say, I'm not a nutritionist or any scientist, but what seems to happen is that once you start on that, you almost seem to need to maintain it, otherwise you have this slump. Um, it can also sometimes play havoc with some people's stomachs, so try not to take too much of it on, but my goodness, it can really help when you start to get into those low points during a race. Right, so this is one of my favorite aid stations. This is the sponge aid station. So these kind of people are handing out these sponges that are just soaked up with icy cold water like I've got in my hand here. Uh, fantastic for a race like this where it's super, super hot. So what the athletes do, grab these sponges, they can even smash them over their head and all that water's gonna release over them. But what you see a lot of the athletes doing, as this chap has just here, is actually grabbing a load of them and shoving them down their suit. And then that cold water is then just gonna release over the next few K whilst they run. Okay, so this is the ice station. I uh, don't get these at all races actually, but obviously this is a particularly hot event, so they're making sure that <laughs> all the athletes are sorted and trying to keep cool. Now, athletes are using this in loads of different ways. So we've seen athletes chucking the ice cubes into hats, popping the hats on the heads, allowing the ice cubes to melt, chucking them down their suits in a similar way to the sponges, or just simply running off with the ice cubes in their hands and also just allowing them to melt and hopefully cooling them down over the next few K whilst they run. Guys, so I'm sandwiched right now between a water station and an isotonic drink station. And as you can see, I have been victim to a bit of splashback. Um, and these are the things these volunteers have to put up with. Um, but no, seriously, um, the water station is, well, everyone knows what water is, but obviously trying to keep them hydrated. It hasn't got anything extra in it. So um, if you do want something that's gonna keep you hydrated and also help give you energy, then that's where the isotonic station comes in. Sometimes it's just nice to have something plain and simple, wash the mouth out, easy to get down. Isotonic station can certainly come in useful if you're trying to keep those energy levels high and also stay hydrated in conditions such as we've got today. Right, this isn't something you get at all A stations, but it's a shower station. Now, 
it is super hot here. Athletes will have been dreaming of this station probably for the last few kilometers of their run. So it's just an opportunity for them to stand under it, soak themselves in nice cold water and just reduce that core body temperature. Okay, and behind us we have the toilets. Now, we won't stay here too long just in case we see something we'd rather not, but fairly important part to the course, particularly over the longer distance events, such as an Ironman as we're here at today. But they will have toilets dotted throughout the race course and pretty much can guarantee that there'll be toilets at most aid stations. So just good to know when you're heading out onto that race. Um, we've also got a drop zone for your litter here. Now, on the bike, you have a drop zone at the beginning and at the end of the aid stations. Now, you are not allowed to drop your litter outside of those drop zones otherwise you'll be awarded a penalty or further may be disqualified so if you are carrying any empty gels or any rubbish for that matter you have to drop that in those drop zones or if you collect anything through the A stations and you use that then you can drop that also in that drop zone after on the run course there's a few more bins dotted throughout the A station so we've got a big one here and then a number of bins now just be a good citizen, try and get your litter in there if you can, but you will not be penalized if you do not get in there. As you can see, there's a lot of litter dotted around here, but just, just be mindful and try and get in there if you can. And one final thing to think about is actually the pace that you come through the A stations at. Now, I know that sounds funny, but I remember Jan Frodeno saying that when he first started doing Ironman racing, he actually walked through all the A stations, even from the off when he felt fresh. Now, that's just a really good tactic, actually, to make sure that you're maintaining that energy, getting all the fuel on that you need, you're staying hydrated and then you can crack on after that. Now we've seen a lot of people adopting that method whether they intended to or not, I'm not sure, um, but yeah really interested to see. Also don't forget these guys are absolute heroes here, they've been fantastic handing out all this stuff voluntary to the racers and competitors today and also helping us out. So um, if you like today's video please do hit that thumbs up button, if you'd like to see more from GTN don't forget to click on the globe and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to see our mount and dismount video with the pros from the championship race in Slovakia you see that by clicking here.